to episode 14 of the Nicole Stitches podcast. I'm Nicole, a left-handed crocheter, knitter, and general crafter, coming to you from Northern Virginia where I work and live with my fiancé and our cat, Webster. If you are a new viewer, thank you so much for stopping by to spend a little time here, and if you are a return viewer, welcome back. You can keep up with me on Instagram at Nicole SP Designs, on Ravelry as she writes things, on Pinterest as NSP Designs, and on Etsy in my shop, NSP Designs, where I make and sell handmade project bags and other fiber accessories as well as original crochet pattern designs. There is a Ravelry group for the podcast. I will link that in the description below as well as uh, all the other social media sites that I just told you about. And if you have been thinking about joining the Ravelry group or kind of waffling on it, I strongly recommend it because we are about to have a giveaway as well as a special Q&A episode of the podcast. So hop on over there, join that, and see if you can win something or if you have a question for me. I think that's everything I had to cover for uh, the intro, and I have lots to share with you this week. Um, I have a finished object. If you've been watching the podcast for a little bit, you probably know what it is. I also have um, a surprise work in progress, uh, one that you have not seen before, and one that I have not seen in quite some time either. I have a little bit of progress on another project, I have a pending new start, and then I have some shop news as well. So it's kind of going to be a jam-packed episode. I'm in a little bit of a hurry. Um, it is much later than I usually record this. Usually in the week my episode is posted by now and I'm just now recording so uh, I really kind of want to get everything taken care of, get it edited and get it posted so that I'm not late. But I'm just gonna get uh, get things going. First I also want to mention before I get too, uh, too invested in all the fiber stuff, um, this will be the episode where I announce the first monthly pattern giveaway. Um, I've talked about, talked about this in a couple of previous episodes, but um, I've decided to give away every month a pattern um, for something that I've worked on in the preceding month of podcast episodes. Because this is the first one, I will give away a copy of any of the patterns I've worked on the whole time I've had the podcast. I will, if I remember, I will list them here, and um, if I don't remember to list them here, I will at least list them in the description below, as well as the show notes, which are in the Ravelry group, and in the giveaway post in the Ravelry group. Um, to be upfront off the top of the episode, I will get into giveaway details later on, but just up top, I have decided that I am going to run the giveaway on Ravelry just because it is where I will be sending the pattern through anyway, uh, unless you chose a cross stitch, but I'll get to that later. Um, Ravelry is how I would send you the pattern anyway, and it just centralizes everything. Um, to make it a lot easier so that I don't lose anybody's entry um, or miss somebody because they commented here on Instagram or something. So uh, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to make a thread in the Ravelry group. Um, I will try to link directly to that thread in the description below once it's made, and that is where I'm going to do the pattern giveaway. So I'll talk more about giveaway details later on in the episode, but I just wanted to mention that up front. If you don't have a Ravelry account, I strongly suggest that you get one because Ravelry is amazing. It's free to join. Um, you don't need to put in a ton of information. You can be as private on there as you want. Want, and it's just a great resource for patterns, ideas, yarn, shop, shops, advice, just everything. Everything is, Ravelry is an amazing resource. So if you're not on there already, which let's be honest, you probably are, but if you're not, I would say hop on there post haste. Okay, so starting off with my finished object. You probably know what this is if you've been watching me for the past, I don't know, month, month and a half, but I have officially completed my Camp Wilkerson wrap. This is a pattern designed by Caitlin Hunter of Boyland Knitworks. It is originally a DK weight pattern, so it is intended for DK weight yarn, but I used fingering all from Stash, and it is finished and blocked. I do have some ends to weave in. I worked on weaving a few ends in today, but I still have these over here, and I have a couple others, yeah just a few ones left to weave in, but it is finished and blocked and I love it so much. It grew so much in blocking and I actually expected that it would grow um, lengthwise from end to end, but it actually grew the most widthwise. It got so much wider than it originally was before blocking. Um, the eyelets here in this red section really opened up and these stripes, they are contrasting between stockinette and garter, and they were kind of scunched up um, before blocking, and they have just flattened out and opened so much, and I love this. I'm so excited about it. I did finish a little bit early. The instructions um, tell you to make a band of gray here, well, not gray, but this color here that is about as wide 
as your starting band on this end. Uh, now keeping in mind that I adapted this for fingering weight yarn, I did do extra rows here, I think, from what the pattern says. Um, and I had originally planned on doing the same number down here, but I was working on it and I, I will be honest, I was very eager to just get it off the needles. But I also kind of liked the, the look of a thinner band at the end. I liked the contrast of having them being two different widths. And I liked the look of this nice, neat, um, kind of more narrow end to it. So I chose to end it a little bit early and bind off. Um, if you're curious, I used, I used a knitted cast on for this. And I honestly um, don't think I'm going to do that much anymore. Knitted cast on is the method that I was first taught um, to use when I was originally taught how to knit um, and since then I have learned the twisted the German twisted cast on or the twisted German cast on it's one of those two and that's what I've used for um, my sweaters because it is stretchy and I actually really like that a lot I think it goes a bit faster once you kind of get a rhythm going with your hands and I think it makes the cast on edge look a lot neater this <laughs> is kind of messy um, it looks neater now that I've blocked it, but it still looks a little bit messy. And so I think from now on I'm going to use that cast on um, for future projects. But I used for my cast by bind off, I used the Jenny's Amazingly Stretchy Bind Off tutorial. You can find that online. There are a couple different ones, I think, but it's the same technique. And that gives a really nice finished, finished edge as well. And it doesn't make it too tight. I'm one of those people who, um, when I also used to do a knitted bind off, my bind off would be really tight and my cast on would be really tight. So um, the Twisted German cast on and Jenny's Amazingly Stretchy Bind Off are helping me to remedy that. But that is that is my Camp Volkerson. I really love it. It's so nice. It is so squishy. The This cream color, I'll tell you the colors I used for the millionth time, but also probably the final time. Uh, I used this gray color is Turn by Madeline Tosh. This is Compass. Um, it is Hawthorne Fingering Kettle Dyed from Knit Picks. The cream color is number 110 from Blue Sky Fibers. It is a alpaca silk blend. And this red is Pendleton Red by Madeline Tosh. I'll list all this information in the description below and in the show notes. And these strips of alpaca silk are so soft and nice. And it's all really nice and squishy. The Hawthorne um, portions. Hawthorne is um, probably my favorite... Um, non-indie fingering weight yarn. It's like a good staple, affordable, accessible, pretty fingering weight yarn from knitpicks.com. It is my favorite. I really love it. I have a, a reasonable, a respectable stash of it, but it is a little bit um, rougher to work with at first. Not rougher, but it, it feels a little bit stiff, um, kind of, it has a, a bit of body to it, and I was a little bit uh, hesitant about how that was going to block out. I've heard very good things about how well Hawthorne block blocks out. I've used it before um, and it blocked out kind of okay. I don't think I did a very good blocking job. I think that that fault is mine, not the yarn. But this time it blocked out really nicely. Most of that stiffness is gone and now it just has really amazing stitch definition. Um, and body to it, but it's it's much softer. It's definitely something that I can wear close to my skin. It's nice and drapey, and I love it. And I also love how the eyelet section blocked out. It made all those eyelets worth it. I am not I am not an eyelet knitter. I will confess. Um, I don't think I would ever actively seek out a pattern that is just nothing but working a bunch of close eyelet rows. <sighs> There, I, w I would do like some lace work and some eyelets, but these eyelets were too close together for me to enjoy the process of knitting them. So there would need to be a few more rows in between, I think, for me to really do something that was heavy on the, the eyelets and lace work. But that is my Camp Wilkerson wrap off the needles. I got it done in time for my vacation. There are nine days until our vacation. I'm so excited. If you're, if you're unaware, we're going on a Disney cruise to Alaska. We leave next Saturday, bright and early in the morning, and I'm so very excited. I wanted to get this done in time, and I did it. So, yay! I'm very pleased. And uh, as I said before, I will put um, my notes for my pattern adaptations into the Ravelry project as well as some finished object pictures. Um, I try to take measurements of the sections that I completed before I blocked them so that anyone else who's looking to adapt to a fingering weight 
version of the wrap. If you're curious about what I did, I will put all that information there. Um, I don't have a scale to weigh how much yardage of yarn I have left, but I have reasonable amounts of all of the colors except for the white. The white came in pretty low yardage hanks to begin with. I'll try to look it up and see how many yards come in a hank. I used, I had two, I used up all of one and most of a second. So I don't have much left of that, but I have this much left of the red. And did I bring that project bag in here? I did not. And I have a pretty good amount left of the yellow, the hawthorn, and I have a pretty good amount left of the gray as well. So um, you will probably not use up one full stain of each color in fingering weight yarn if you do the same number of rows and things as me. Um, but it is still a great stash buster because now I have, uh, I don't have like a random oddball tiny amount of yarn left. I have a reasonable amount left that I can definitely do something else with. All right, I'm back with my tea. I need, a, I need a little bit of hydration. I am drinking, if you're curious, Tezo Passion Tea. Um, I love from Starbucks the shaken iced tea lemonade that they do, unsweetened, um, with passion tea. And I found the passion tea bags at the grocery store recently, and I love them. I am a big iced tea drinker. It's how I stay hydrated, drinking more than just water. And being on a diet as I am currently, I will not be staying on the diet on vacation because I like myself and I want to have a good time. But being <laughs> on a diet as I am, having a nice uh, fruity, flavorful tea has been really good for me when I'm like craving something sweet and I know that I shouldn't have it. Um, this has been a great way for me to curb that. Totally irrelevant to knitting. I'm gonna move on now to works in progress. So. Uh, I am also working on a goldfish memory wrap by Casapinka. If you've been around here for a little while, you know that I'm working on that. I have no progress on it. Once again, I have not worked on any other knitting, um, with an exception I'll show you in a minute. I haven't worked on anything but my Camp Wilkerson wrap since the last time that I recorded because I wanted to get it finished. Um, I do have it here. I could pop it out and show you if anyone is new to the podcast. Um, here is my goldfish memory where I am. So far, I think I'm on section, I don't know, four or five of the pattern. Um, it's very small sections, which is really nice and fun. It keeps things interesting. I'm using all Hedgehog Fibers yarn. I'm using, oh god, we've had a little yarn uh, vomit in the project bag. Whoopsie. I'm um, using Method is this gray color. Rusty Nail is the burnt orange. And here is Urchin. So now that my Camp Wilkerson is finished, this is going to start to get all of my attention. I probably need to recake this yarn um, in order to get anywhere with my sanity intact. But this is going to now become my main project and it is going to come on vacation with us as well. And as a surprise knitting work in progress, I was going through uh, our spare closet the other day. Our In, in this room is our combination um, office, my shop. Kind of craft and bookshelves area um and i was going through the closet in here looking for something related to crafting and i came across a couple of um early iterations of project bags and i say that with kind of a dubious tone because this is probably the worst quality bag i've ever uh seen <laughs> this is this is the bag it's awful. If you looked at this bag, you would never guess that I now sell project bags for money. Uh, it's, it's not good. Um, like I did do, I did French seams in here, um, but I did them with black thread, which is an interesting choice. I think that I was having sewing machine problems and black thread was just what was on the bobbin and I gave up and decided to just roll with that. Um, but I didn't top stitch. My zipper is sewn on really strangely. My lining is bad. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's rough. And I'm not even going to show you the inside because the inside is worse. But this was my like first, um, this is a Zelda, the video game Zelda, if you are curious. I can find it there. There's Link. Um, if you know anything about video games, I'm sure you know who he is. But this was just my first attempt at making a project bag for myself, and it was not very good, but it was what I came up with at the time. <laughs> so glad I've progressed by many leaps and bounds since then. But in here was um, actually a my oldest knitting work in progress, 
and this is um, my first shawl knitting project that I ever started. This was the first thing that I did that was um, not a straight knitted or ribbed like straight scarf or a hat. And this is a triangle shawl. This pattern is by Kemper Ray of Junk Yarn. She is an amazing indie dyer and she used to have a podcast. She has not updated in quite some time. She's talked kind of recently about coming back, uh, but she hasn't done it yet. But she now has her indie dyed yarn, Junk Yarn, which is all colorways inspired by and named after um, some great ladies throughout history and today. This is a design by her called the, I think, I think it's pronounced Jacassi, maybe Jacassi. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'll spell it um, and I'll link to it in the description. But this is a shawl pattern that she released a couple years ago and it is just a standard triangle shawl. It's intended to use up about one skein of sock weight yarn and it's pretty easy. It is just strips of garter stitch and then some drop stitches. And this yarn is by Andre Sue Knits, who also used to have a podcast and does not update anymore. And she used to dye yarn. She doesn't dye yarn anymore. This was when she was dyeing skeins of yarn. She then shifted over to painting sock blanks and her work painting sock blanks was honestly ludicrous. It was so good. It was insanely good. I could not. Like, if you go look at her Instagram feed, um, I'll try to remember to link it in the show notes, and you scroll down to when she was posting a lot about her sock blanks, it was incredible what she could paint on those things with, with dye. Um, and it was amazing. She did, these sock blanks were like works of art. Um, I don't think she does them anymore, but this was when she was dyeing skeins of yarn. And this is actually the first one of the first skeins of hand dyed yarn that I ever bought. Um, it was a one-off skein by her. I think all of her skeins at that time were one-offs. Um, it's called Sea Urchin. And I started this project, to give you an idea of how old it is, I started this project before my fiance and I um, were even speaking to each other, really. Um, <laughs> he is the older brother. He's actually the older brother of one of my best friends. So we had known each other for quite a while before we started dating, but we never really um, talked that much. Um, yeah, we were just kind of around each other. We knew of each other. But um, this was, I started this and did almost all this work on it before we were even really speaking or, or dating. Um, so that's how old this is. And I got pretty far on it. Uh, and then I stopped and <laughs> shoved it in the bag and it's kind of just been hanging out ever since then. I actually got so far that this is all I have left <laughs> of the yarn. This is, I mean, come on. So, <laughs> um, I think what happened is I set it aside to work on something else briefly, a crochet project or a cross stitch or something, and I came back to it and I was not yet a skilled enough knitter to figure out where I had left off in the pattern. I didn't mark my place and I was not yet skilled enough to figure out where I had left off and how to, how to move forward. So I kind of let it fade into the shadows. But I found this in the closet. I moved it with me to Virginia. I found it in the closet and I looked in this bag. I saw how much yarn I have left and I was like, you know what? This is ridiculous. Just finish it. Finish it off. Um, use up the last little tiny bit of this ball and you'll have this beautiful shawl. It's gorgeous. These colors are gorgeous. I'm actually really excited to get this finished now that I have refound it. So I pretty much figured out where in the pattern I am. I knit like three rows on it the other day just for kicks. And I'm going to work on this sporadically now as well just to get it finished because it's kind of bananas that this has just been, I mean, come on. So that is a uh, surprise kind of spontaneous work in progress that I've got going on that with any luck will be a finish very soon. I'm going to put it back in this bag and then when I finish the project I'm going to um, burn this bag. <laughs> thinking about disassembling it and trying to reconstruct it in a quality form that is quite possibly what I will do because uh, I just can't I can't even deal with this. I just I can't deal with it. My next work in progress is a cross stitch. I uh, showed this off last week when it was just started. This is a pattern by Satsuma Street. It is a baby sampler. Oh no, I just messed up my drawstring. Oh god. Oh no. Oh no. Uh oh. Oh, everything's ruined. Oh lord. I'm back. There we go. I fixed it. Don't panic, everyone. Settle down.
This is a pattern by Satsuma Street, Jody Rice. She is a cross-stitch designer. She does lots of little um, designs of various cities. I think that's what she's kind of known for. She's done Pretty Little New York, Pretty Little San Francisco, Pretty Little London. And she did this one, which is called Pretty Little Baby. I'll show you my progress on it real quick. Um, her work is very inspired by Mary Blair, who you would know most likely as the woman who designed the artwork and theming for the It's a Small World ride at Disney World. She also did some other, and Disneyland, she also did some other work here and there for Disney, but that's um, how like the general public would probably know of Mary Blair. And Satsuma Street takes a lot of inspiration from that art style, so lots of uh, color blocking and dynamic patterns, and it's very cool. So anyway. This is a cross stitch by Satsuma Street. It's called Pretty Little Baby, and it is a baby sampler. This is a gift for my best friend's nieces. Uh, my best friend's sister recently had twin girls, and so Rachel and I are each making one um, for the babies. Um, so I'll be making one for one of the girls, which is making the other, and then we are hoping to get this done by Christmas so that we can gift them to her sister and nieces. And I'm really enjoying working on this. I've had some hand and wrist pain lately from trying to work through my Camp Wilkerson so quickly. I did kind of push my limits with it a bit, and this has been a great remedy. I get antsy if I am just sitting and my hands are not busy. And so this has been a great way for me to still be doing something with my hands, but I'm holding everything in a different position. So it relaxes my muscles that I've been straining and it stretches some others and it's, it's great. That's a tip that I have if you're like me and you can't stand to sit still and not have something going on with your hands, but you need to give it a rest from knitting or crochet, try embroidery or cross stitch. Um, or even if your hands are tired from crochet, try knitting and vice versa, because it just works different muscles of your hands and it stretches them differently. And it's a, it's a great solution if you can't sit still. So that's my cross stitch progress. Um, and I'm really enjoying it. That is all of my works in progress for this week. And I will now show you my pending new start. Um, you might've kind of seen some hints at this in my Instagram stories. If you follow me on there a couple days ago, but now that my camp Wilkerson is off the needles, I have been on the lookout for another project to start. I want to have two projects I think with me when we go on the cruise because I am anticipating that I will do a lot of knitting. And if I finish my goldfish memory wrap, I will have nothing to do. So, I have had a pattern in my library for quite some time with um, the intent to start it very soon, and I am taking up this opportunity. It is the Exordium Wrap by Rebecca Picolt, I believe is her name. I'll try to insert a picture here so you can see it. It is a beautiful two-color shawl, and I have wanted to work on it for quite a while, and I'm making myself finally start. I got the pattern printed. It is in my living room right now. Of course. Um, I haven't set up a project bag for myself yet, so that's why I don't have it in a bag. But here's the yarn I will be using. I had a bit of a color dilemma for my color combinations when I was deciding what to uh, use for this pattern, but I finally picked them out. Here are my choices. Um, I wanted the tonals and speckles look really pretty in this pattern, so I wanted to use some of my indie dyed yarn for that with kind of uh, a lot going on, but I didn't want the colors to fight with each other. Um, so I picked one that is darker colors and one that is lighter colors. They're, um, and they both have some speckling going on and I really like them. This one is Bus Station 4AM from Old Rusted Chair. This is an indie dyer named Lauren. She's based in Nashville and she's really awesome. Her colors are amazing. I have a uh, little stash of Old Rusted Chair um, and I'm happy to finally be using this is the first time I'm using some of my old rusted chair yarn in a project. I'm really excited about it. This colorway is gorgeous. And this is Free Denim from Spun Right Round. Also have a small stash, small but mighty stash of Spun Right Round. And I think this is the first time that I'm actually being able to use some of that yarn in a project as well. So that's pretty cool. And I can't wait to see these colors together. Um, I think it's gonna look really pretty. I'm gonna start that this week. Um, I needed to take a couple days off from knitting, as I said, but I might start this. I'm definitely starting this weekend. I might start it today. We'll see how my time management goes for the rest of the night. I have to run some errands and uh, post this, but I'm really excited to get this cast on. So you'll see it next week um, in my project bag, how I get myself all set up and the progress that I've made. But I wanted to share with you my yarn choices and uh, let you know that that was next on the docket. That is all of my crafting progress for the week. Um, I do have some shop news. I have a couple things actually, and I will share them with you right now. The first piece of shop news is a new 
product. I am so excited about them. They are these project pouches is what I'm calling them. I'm putting them, I'm categorizing them as notions pouches in my shop um, because that is what they are, but I already have a notions pouch size bag. Let me grab one if I have it on hand, which of course I don't. So never mind. I already have um, notions pouches I offer. They're little square dudes or I have a couple that are wedge triangle shaped. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep the triangle ones in my shop uh, for much longer. They're a little bit finicky to make and I've really enjoyed having the flat ones. But anyway, I am adding this size as well. I wanted to add a pouch size that was big enough to hold a crochet hook because if you are anything like me in your knitting project bags, you carry a crochet hook to fix dropped stitches or other mistakes um, and to help weave in ends. My current Notions pouch size fits the little mini crochet hooks that you can get on like a keychain. It fits those, but it does not fit a full-size crochet hook. This one does. Um, let's take this big fat one and slide it in here as an example. It fits nice and comfy all the way down in there. It also fits um, interchangeable needle tips. It fits uh, circular needles. It They should also fit double-pointed needles. This is just one that I have hanging out in my apartment. I don't know where my double-pointed needles are since I moved. I haven't needed them, but that tucks in there as well. It's a little bit snug, but you could definitely fit it in there. Oh wait, there we go. Okay, yep, a double-pointed needle fits in there. Um, I would not say a DPN cozy on your needles will fit in there, but your needles will. And so you can fit longer scissors in here, cable needles, whatever you need. And I am so excited about these. I've wanted to add them for quite a while, but I haven't had the time. Um, and I haven't had the supplies. I needed to get another size of zippers, but here they are. So I have them in this purple tiger fabric, which is one of my faves. I also have this fabric in red and I am obsessed with the red version of this fabric. I have hungry, hungry hippos. This fabric was a special order. Um, one of my good friends, actually my fiance's sister, asked me to make her something with this fabric and I had some leftovers. So I whipped up a couple of project pouches. I will also be making project bags in this fabric, but I will only have two in the shop. Three, two. I will only have two in the shop. So if you're interested in that, keep an eye out. I have some mermaids. I had three of these, but one has been claimed already. So thank you very much. Um, so there are two mermaids in the shop and then I have these sunglasses. And I'm really excited about these. Again, I'm very happy to add them to my shop. So I wanted to share that in here. I have more coming, including some of my older prints that I don't have much of in the shop anymore. I will have some very limited quantities in this size. So if there's anything, um, if you've followed my shop for a while and there's an older fabric you haven't seen from me in a bit, it may be popping up very soon in one of these sizes. And I will also have a lot of my uh, common, like, prints that are still around and that I keep updated in the shop as well. My other shop news is that I have gotten some restocks of fabric. I've had a lot of questions lately about my Pitbull fabric, which is right here. I've had people asking if I was going to bring it back, and yes, I am. Here it is. I love this so much. Um, I had a Pitbull lab mix for 10 years named Sadie. Um, she passed away a couple years ago from cancer, but I really love, I have a, such a soft spot in my heart for pit bulls and pit bull mixes now. They're so sweet. And when I saw this fabric, it was instant. It was an instant buy. It had to go in my shop. Um, I might have talked about this fabric in a previous episode. I don't remember, but I'm sharing about it again because I cannot get over it. Okay. I also grabbed a couple restocks of holiday prints. I can't believe I'm getting holiday... <laughs> holiday fabrics already. It's only August, but it feels like I need to. Um, this is a print that I also had in the shop last year. It is little uh, woodland creatures in sweaters. It's very cute. People liked this one last year, so I grabbed it. And last year I only had it in medium project bags. It was before I revealed my um, large sweater project bag size, but I have enough here to make a couple of large project bags as well as my standard bag size. So that's very exciting. The camera filled up. So I had to go and transfer the file to my computer, and that was very tiring, so I had to get a cup of coffee, and now I'm back. The other holiday fabric returning to my shop is my Kittens in Mittens fabric. I will show you in a moment. So let me put my coffee down. So my Kittens in Mittens fabric is also returning. This one is um, was my most popular fabric at holiday time last year. It sold out the quickest. And so I was happy to bring it back again this year. I love these little kitties so much. They're so cute. And um, and just like the woodland creatures there, I got enough this year to um, make up a couple of large bags and more medium bags. So if you missed your chance last year, here they are back. Um, they'll be back 
later this year. They're not back yet. It's going to be a little bit, but they're coming back. And you, if you know my shop, are familiar with what I have in there typically, you know that I offer a print that is um, coffee cups and donuts, and I grabbed a holiday version of that as well. So here is that print. I uh, messed up when I was ordering the yardage of this, and I ordered very not enough. So I'm going to have to order more, but I have some, and this is really cute. I'm very excited about this one as well. So it's the uh, ubiquitous coffee cup we all know and love around the holiday season, and I will be popping this into the shop at holiday time as well. This, these are not going to go up right now. They'll go up um, maybe in October or November. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to release holiday stuff yet, but they are coming, so stick around. More pressing is Halloween fabric. Halloween fabric is probably going to go into my shop soon-ish. Um, not like this week or the week after because this coming week um, I will be around but I am going to be doing some regular shop work and then I'll be on vacation but probably shortly after that I will pop Halloween fabric into the shop because the season will be here. But this is one of my first Halloween fabrics. I love this one. It reminds me of the Haunted Mansion at Disney World. Um, it's really cool with the little ghost lady dress and there's a Victorian mansion on here somewhere. There it is. And there's a spooky cat and I just I think this fabric is really cool. Um, I will have this in, I should have it in all my regular bag sizes and some pouches as well. And this one, you guys. You know that I have a regular pinup lady fabric that we all love and appreciate and um, Still in the shop there are a couple of small bags, but um, they haven't been around for a little while in larger sizes, but I've also offered zombie pinup girls in the past, and this year, for Halloween, spooky costumed pinup ladies! They are amazing! I love them so much. Let me try to make sure you can see all of them here. We've got a black cat, we've got a witch, we've got a lady in a devil costume. They're fantastic. I'm so excited about this. I am so excited that I am really thinking about getting this fabric in other colors. I love these ladies so much, and this fabric will be going into the shop super soon as well. I'm also going to try and get more of the zombie pinup girls. Um, people loved them when I had them previously. It's been a little bit since I could find the fabric, but I'm going to try and find more. Um, I also ha intend to have at least one more uh, autumnal Halloween season uh, fabric come into the shop. I just haven't picked it out yet. And there will be more holiday fabrics. There are a couple others that I like um, that I want to bring back. I also still have some hanging out in the holiday shop section of my shop. They are prints left over from last year. Um, but that's my shop update for the week. Take a sip of coffee and then move on to reading progress. Um, I forgot to bring my book in here, but I am currently reading The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis. Um, it is about, I, I think it's a YA book, not, I think it's a YA book. I picked it up in the adult section of my Barnes & Noble, but I believe it is YA and it was just shelved wrong. Um, but it is about a girl in high school whose sister gets murdered and so she decides to get vengeance. But she's also kind of existing in the social sphere of high school and it's a about a lot of like the dynamics of being of being female and um, it kind of the book kind of operates on the premise of the female is the more dangerous of the, the species um, between female and male. Um, that is, I sorely misquoted that, but that quote is printed on the back of the book and that's kind of the, the basis on which the whole plot of the novel is, is spinning. It's really good. Um, I'm definitely having no problem setting aside everything else to read for an hour before bed every night. I'm really liking it. I just I left it on my nightstand. I have also been back into listening to audiobooks. Um, so I will have going a book book, a physical book, and then an audiobook um, for during the day or when I'm working on my shop. When I'm working for work, um, I tend to listen to podcasts. But when I'm out of new episodes, I will switch on an audiobook, or when I am working for the shop or just doing dishes and stuff, I'll switch on an audiobook so that I can be having my brain engaged while I'm keeping busy with my hands. And I have been reading The Road to Jonestown, which is about Jim Jones and the People's Temple um, by Jeff Gwynn, and I just finished that yesterday. It was a very good book. 
Um, it gave a lot of perspective that you don't really get when most people talk about Jonestown and what happened there. Everyone knows the line, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Um, one of the things that the book teaches you is that they didn't drink Kool-Aid, they drank Flavor Aid because it was less expensive. But um, if you are someone who's interested in cults, uh, um, uh, demagogues, um, the 70s, true crime, all of that, um, it is a nonfiction book, but it is very interesting. Um, and it's very compelling, especially, again, if that's kind of a topic or a group of topics that you're interested in. And I really appreciated how much information it gave um, that you don't get to hear about and how much it gave about the people who were there who kind of get lumped in as being, like, shady participants in this thing. And they were just, they were just people working toward a common goal and that's all they thought it was. And then the dynamics of everything kind of swept them into something way bigger that they couldn't control. Um, and I strongly recommend that book if you're at all interested, again, in true crime or cults or things of that nature. That was very good. So that's it for reading progress, and now I will move on to the giveaway! Uh, so, if you've been keeping up with me, you know this already, but just a quick run through for anyone who's new. Um, as I mentioned at the top of the episode, I'm starting a monthly pattern giveaway where I will choose one viewer to receive a free copy of a pattern I have worked on over the course of the preceding month. And this being the first one, you can choose from anything I've worked on the whole time that I've had the podcast. You could choose from the Asana Wrap, the Tecumseh Sweater, the Spotlight Sweater, the Camp Wilkerson, Goldfish Memory, Exordium, technically. It's not started yet, but I'll give it to you. Um, you could choose from a one of my patterns that I've released. I think I've released at least one pattern since the podcast started. My Dear Baby Blanket. Or you could choose from the two uh, cross-stitch patterns that I've worked on this month. I will list all the patterns you could choose from in the show notes and the giveaway thread, but um, I've worked on two cross-stitch projects. If you pick a cross-stitch, I obviously can't send you that pattern through Ravelry. You'll have to give me your email address so I can send you the PDF from Etsy. Um, but that's the deal. I will open a thread on Ravelry um, for the purposes of entering. You may post once um, with your entry, and all I want to know is I would like you to post um, tell me your name and tell me the project you would most like to work on of the options available. So of the patterns that you could win, if you are chosen, let me know which one is your fave. I will leave the thread open until, let's say, next Thursday, because Thursday is when I typically film the podcast, so I will leave it open until then. I ask in your Ravelry uh, group post that you just tell me your YouTube username so that I can verify that you are subscribed to the channel, um, and then let me know what your favorite project is that you've seen on the podcast so far. For the purposes of this first giveaway, I will go ahead and give you one extra entry if you also comment on this YouTube video, this one down below. Um, let me know in that case what your Ravelry username is and so that I can verify it. And then I will close the thread on Thursday before I record my next episode and I will pick a winner and announce it there. Um, and I will send you your, your pattern of choice. I'll get in touch with you if you want. And that'll be the giveaway. Also, please keep in mind that not next week, but the week after, I will be on vacation and I will be unable to access the internet. So I will be hoping to post a scheduled video for that week so that you're not left hanging, but it will be a Q&A video. So if you have questions um, about me, my shop, my podcast, um, books I love, projects, crafting, uh, anything, um, my favorite musical, my favorite junk food, um, any, anything, uh, post it. You can post it here in the comments. I also opened a Q&A thread on Ravelry. Go post it there. I will collect those questions and I will record a video and post it while I'm gone. Um, and that's, that's it, I think, for the news in terms of life updates. It's been a fairly uneventful week. Um, not, not a ton has happened. I did learn this week how to... <laughs> He would not appreciate me telling you this, I don't think, but my lovely fiancé, Adam, uh, we were burning a candle the other night, um, a black cherry candle from Yankee. We like the fruity candles, if you're interested. Um, we were burning a black cherry candle, which is a dark burgundy color, and it had been burning for a couple hours. It was sitting on... We have a counter 
out of outside of our kitchen that kind of butts up against the living room, which is carpeted. You may see where this is going. The candle had been burning for a couple hours, so there was lots of melted wax pulled in the top of it, and he blew it out, and then turned and bumped it with his arm, and it splattered all over <laughs> about a four-foot radius. So, that was mostly carpet. It was a, we have a shelf that's right under that counter that it got on. It got on my purse, and in my purse, because my purse was open, it got on my gym shoes, uh, it got on some mail, and it got a lot on our rented beige carpet which was not ideal. <laughs> but uh, I actually learned how, because of this, to remove uh, candle wax from the carpet. So what you do is you ice it to harden the wax again, to solidify it. So you take ice, put it in a bag, or if you have an ice pack, you ice it so that it is hard and solid and cool. Then you take a butter knife and you scrape up as much as you can of the wax flax out of the carpet. You vacuum it up. As much as you can and then you get an iron and a paper bag and you put the paper bag down over the wax and then you iron over top of the bag and that causes a heat transfer so the wax remelts but then it soaks up into the paper and it comes up out of your carpet and it was kind of amazing I wasn't totally sure that it would work very well I was positive we were like gonna be out our security deposit when we move out of here if you went and looked at that carpet now you would have no idea that burgundy candle wax got splattered all over it I mean it was incredible I went over, there were some tougher spots that I went over a couple times with the iron. You do have to be careful because you don't want to hurt the carpet fibers, like you don't want to melt them or burn them or scorch anything. Um, so you don't want to crank your iron, but you want to, you just want to get it hot enough to melt the wax again through the paper. And then a couple spots I spritzed with some Resolve as well just to get the last of the pigment out of it, but you would never know, which was pretty incredible. I think I have a superpower now. I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> So that was how we spent one evening the other day, and um, yeah, he is away for the weekend this weekend, uh, going to a wedding of an old college buddy. I was not able to take the time from work or from the shop to go with him. Um, he is a couple states away for this. He's in North Carolina, so uh, he's down there with some of his college friends having, having a good time at this wedding. He's a groomsman, and I am here catching up on many, many things, housekeeping, shop work, life obligations, etc. Um, I think that's about everything I have for you this week. Thanks so much for sticking around. Webster, what are you even doing with your life? That's it for this week. Thank you so much for sticking around. I think this might be a longer one. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. We'll find out when I'm editing. Anyway, either way, Thank you for spending time with me. I really appreciate it. If you were a new viewer, thanks so much. If you made it to the end, if you're a return viewer, thanks for coming back. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to join the Ravelry group, enter the giveaway, um, leave me questions in the Q&A thread or the comments down below. I will see you next week with the giveaway winner. And thanks so much. I hope you have a great week and get a lot of crafting done. I'll see you next time. Bye.